You remember in the before times when you could actually like go out to restaurants and bars and things like that? Did you ever have something like this happen to you? Hi, welcome to Cafe Covid. What can I get you to drink? Hi folks and welcome back to another episode of Make a Martini! Let's get 15 seconds on the clock. Are you ready? Let's go! First question, gin or vodka? Do you want it wet, dry, or extra dry? How about dirty? Up or on the rocks? Olives or a twist? Oh, I'm sorry, time's up. Thanks for playing. Join us next time on Make a Martini. Hey friends, welcome back. I'm Stephanie outside. We're doing another inside video today because we've got a couple of really strong drinks on board to uh, help you get through the rest of whatever this is gonna turn into. Welcome to the Quarantine College Comprehensive Cocktail Course. Say that five times fast. Sponsored today by Main Street Farmer Eatery. They do have a fabulous curbside takeout service, so if you are looking for something that's a little uh, different than what you've been eating, it is fresh, made from scratch, a lot of local Minnesota ingredients. So give them a call, link's down in the description below. They'll get you set up with something pretty tasty. So anyway, we're gonna be making three different martinis today. The first one is going to be the traditional. We're going to teach you how to make a dirty martini. And then the last martini that we're going to get into is one that you've probably heard referenced quite a bit. But we'll get to that in just a second. But we're going to start off with the traditional gin martini. For this, you are going to need gin, dry vermouth, a stirring glass, a bar spoon, put that there, and last but not least, your jigger and hawthorn strainer from the other video. All right, so we've got our tools. Now we just need some ice. And we also need a martini glass. So, I'm not short pouring myself. These are oversized martini glasses because they were a wedding present and my family knows me well. On to the fun part. Uh, grab whatever gin you happen to have lying around, uh, whatever was gifted to you, whatever was left over from your cousin's bat mitzvah. It really doesn't matter. Just have your own preference. And if you're one of those people that think, I absolutely hate gin, it tastes like chewing on pine needles. Stephanie, why are we making a drink out of chewed up pine needles? Bear with me, it does get better. So you're gonna have three ounces, or three ounces there. Whatever. 0.25 of the dry vermouth. Set that down, grab some ice. And we're going to stir this. Always, always stir gin. Unless it's dirty, but we'll get to that in a second. Always stir gin. There's a lot of different botanicals going on. You don't want to shake it and end up what they call bruising the spirit. It kind of muddles everything up together. What we're looking for here is a very nice, silky, smooth cocktail. Um, put the bowl, uh, the back of the bowl, against your glass. You can also just use a regular little pint glass for this. You don't have to get super fancy. Depending on the type of ice that you're using, you don't have to stir for too terribly long. What you're looking for here is getting it a little cold. And we are diluting things a little bit. It just kind of helps everything blend together. So it's probably more than enough. Set that back off. Grab your Hawthorne strainer. Get your martini glass. Pour straight in. Doesn't look like much, tastes delicious. Let's do one little olive because I forgot to grab cocktail picks and I have very tiny toothpicks and very large olives. So there is your traditional gin martini. On to the dirty part of this video. I amuse myself at least. We are going to be grabbing our vodka, olive brine, we already went ahead and poured this out because we got the Costco olive jar size. This one, we are going to grab the shakers because A, we're using vodka. There's not really as much complexity to vodka, so it doesn't matter if you quote unquote bruise it. 
We're also using olive brine. It sort of covers up anything. So if you do prefer a little bit sharper bite to your dirty martinis, try using gin. Put the olive brine in there. You can go ahead and shake it until the cows come home. So grab your cocktail tins, the handy dandy jigger again. The basic recipe is the same to start on this one. Speaking of Costco size, one, two, default to a half ounce of the olive brine. You can go a full ounce if you're looking for a Saturday night type of dirty. Mice, again. Doesn't have to be a ton. Again, we just want it to dilute down the drink a little bit, get it nice and cold. Put your topper on, get that sealed up, and... All right, thankfully, much less shaking and pulp than we did with the whiskey sour. Grab yourself another martini glass. Break the seal. All right. Now for this one, not only do you want to have your Hawthorne strainer, but it also helps if you have a little, little mess strainer around as well. This is gonna catch those little bits of ice chunks that probably broke off while we were shaking there. So again, you want a nice, silky smooth martini. You don't want a vodka slushie. Although that does sound pretty good. We'll get to that in another video. So get all that put together. Have yourself uh, another olive, two olives, three olives, five olives, doesn't matter. There you go, you've got yourself a dirty martini. You may be thinking to yourself, those all sound great. I've got my gin martini, I've got my vodka martini, but what if we put them together? How about that one? Well friends, you're in luck. Mr. James Bond himself gave us the answer to that one. We are going to need the gin again, the vodka, the vermouth, and they're all gonna have a whole lot of fun together here in a second. Now we all know James Bond likes to order his martinis shaken, not stirred. That's fantastic, but Mr. Bond, uh, apologies to you, but we're gonna go ahead and stir this one. So grab your stirring glass back, grab your spoon back. Now this one is probably the strength that it needs to be for an international man of mystery and having to forget a lot of the things that he's seen, said, and done, and who, but uh, Starting off again with three ounces. I do like this Gordon's. Um, it has a little bit of a black pepper note to it. I've had uh, some fun making other cocktails with it as well. It just uh, lends itself really nicely to some things. So, we're gonna do a full ounce of your vodka. Now, why you add vodka into a gin martini like this, not just for the extra alcohol, but the vodka just sort of wakes up the gin. It's chemistry, it's weird, wonderful, wide world of science type of stuff. We're not going to get into that because I'm just teaching you how to make them, not the molecular structures necessarily. Half ounce of the dry vermouth in this case. So for those of you keeping score at home, we've got four and a half ounces of booze in this cocktail here. I don't know about you, but uh, we don't let alcohol go to waste in this house. Um, we're about to have some fun as soon as we're finished filming. You should come on over, or maybe I'll just stick it through the screen. Don't worry, I've been washing my hands, as you should be. Stay home, wash your hands. You good? Okay, back to the cocktail. Grab ice. Again, wash my hands. Grab some ice. Grab martini glass. Grab your spoon. And we're gonna stir this up again. Now, I do tend to count uh, all of my drinks that I'm shaking and stirring. I do roughly 50 rotations, and I'm counting, you know, that movement as one. So I'm starting with the back of the spoon, you know, at a 12 o'clock point to myself. So coming all the way around, uh, that counts as one. So one, two, three, you get it. We're counting. Ah, 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 one martini. I should just stop there. All done with that? Cool. Grab your. Hawthorne strainer again. Get that stuck up on there. And just pour that little bit of delightful, glorious, ever so delicious Vesper Martini. 
into your glass. Now, what are we gonna do for a garnish on this one? I found the fresh lemons. Look at me go. We don't have a channel knife with us. That is what makes that really cool, like very uniform looking spirally thing. So uh, like our eyeliner and everything else we're doing right now, we're gonna wing it. There's a very sharp knife here, so do be careful. Kids, ask your parents if they can supervise you. Be very carefully. We're going to cut ourselves a long, thin slice, just the skin here. You don't want to get into too much of the white part, so you're going to end up with something looking like that. If you want, you can just use this thing as is, give a little bit of a rustic look. Uh, you can kind of cut it up a little bit, make little, I don't know, rind origami shapes if you want. We're just going to do the quick and easy uh, little twist here to express the oils off the rind here and just sort of give that a little rub around the edge of the glass and go ahead and drop that in. Now what's really cool about being able to cut garnishes like that is uh, we'll show you this in a later video, but you can actually make flaming garnishes with it and uh, it's pretty cool, fun little trick. So there we have it. Cheers and a nod to uh, Daniel Craig, my favorite Bond. Tell me yours, leave me some comments, let me know. There you have it, martinis three ways. Now you know how to make them at home. I'm gonna leave links to a lot of the tools that I use today. Again, a special thanks and a uh, link in the description to our sponsor, Main Street Farmer Eatery. Uh, we really appreciate them enabling us to make some of these videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great night. Let me know how these drinks turned out for you. We'll see you in the next video. If you feel like tipping your bartender, I would very much appreciate that. I did add one more link for you to click. I have started a coffee account. Help me keep these videos going. We'll see you next time.